Thanks for tuning in to the Long Island Local Podcast, recorded here at Audio Workstations in Bohemia, New York. We are interviewing local business owners, entrepreneurs, trying to provide you with the best information on all types of products and services available right here on Long Island. I'm your host, Matt, and let's jump right into the conversation. Welcome to the Long Island Local Podcast, recorded here at Audio Workstations. And we are interested in talking to local business owners and entrepreneurs here on Long Island specifically. And so today we are welcoming Michelle of Michelle Shops. Michelle, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. (laughs) You can find uh, Michelle's website at shop.dumpling.us forward slash Michelle 26. That's two L's in Michelle. I just wanted to let everybody know where they can find you online. And uh, now I'd like to ask you about your business. So if that's all right, let's get started. Well, I started working gig apps like DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats, and I was delivering prepared food. Mm -hmm. So during the past four years, Uber Eats started sending me offers to do shop and delivery. And I was like, wow, I like that so much better. That's a lot more interesting, challenging. And I realized the service is becoming more in demand, more mainstream, Then I learned about an app called Dumpling, and I was like, let me check that out. And what Dumpling offers, it offers people to start their own personal shopping business without the use of using a third-party app. So that means you're starting your own small business. You work for yourself instead of working as an independent contractor using the third-party apps. I understand. That's that's cool. That's empowering. So that's like you get the technology, you get the benefit of the technology and the ease of use that the consumer has of, of using the app in order to use the service, but you're not working under this big umbrella and then having to be a private contractor and, and all that stuff. It's just going into business for yourself with the technology on your side. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's cool. I wanted to make sure I was understanding that correctly. And so what year did you start? You started this in 2020 or 2021? The Dumpling, I started using the app in October 2021. Okay. I've been doing... The third party apps, I started in 2017. Right. So I have a lot of experience and I've watched them roll out this new service of shop and deliver because it is becoming more in demand. People want the service. Yeah. The grocery store for some people is a scarier place than it used to be. And, um, you know, there are definitely times when I sit at home and uh, am feeling too lazy to go to the grocery <laughs> store. And uh, I think that there's power in that service right there that you're providing. Yeah, a lot of people don't like to shop. Yeah. Or, you know, what happens to me often is I'll go into the grocery store with specific things in mind. I'll forget those things and I'll buy other things that are more expensive than I wanted. And then I'm mad at myself when I leave. And so I feel like if I were to use a service like yours, it would contain my grocery store problems and keep me on task to the things that I actually needed and and stay on budget. So I'm just thinking out loud here that I, I might actually start using this because I'm, I'm notorious for spending more money than I want to at the grocery store. And it's time consuming when you're busy, you want to run your business or you have a busy lifestyle. Yes. Something you can do while you're finally relaxed you in front know, of the TV at night and you go, you know, let me turn on the app for 10 minutes and place an order and let me see who's available tomorrow to do, shop and deliver my goods. Yeah. It's very convenient. That's cool. I used to rely on the 24-hour grocery store thing and there's less and less of them specifically on long island i used to be a big pathmark shopper because i like past 11 30 at night yeah. it was the only place you could get groceries um and then now they're all gone and now when it's late at night um because i'm often leaving the studio late at night we run a lot of nighttime music sessions and so if i don't have what i need at home and there's there's no 24 hour thing i end up you know kicking myself so that but just to and, and then you know i don't want to get up early in the morning and go do it so it's placing an order late at night that will arrive in the morning sounds very tempting to me right now. So yes, all it's right, a good I like service. this. <laughs> okay, cool. And so what is some of your background before you got into the personal delivery market? Where did you come from before that? And then why did you transition to that? For the past four decades, I started very young. I started working in the restaurant business. Okay. And I worked in the restaurant business privately owned local places for 
at least 25 years. Okay, so you know food service really well. Yes, and then that led me to setting up displays to give out samples of products. I did that for like three to four years, which led me to working at a food store. And the older I got, the harder the job got because it's a very manual labor, long hours kind of industry. But again, I was giving great customer service and serving prepared food and preparing food for people to pick up for convenience. Right. And then I started working a second job, which led me to working DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats. And I started that in 2017. And then I left the food store because I ended up becoming an independent contractor, right. which led me now to learn about dumpling. And the moment I heard about dumpling, I knew right then and there that I knew I wanted to start a shopping business of my own, set my own hours provide a service that's needed, give quality service, and without the middleman. Yeah. You know, build a relationship with your customers and build a small business. Yeah, directly. Yeah. I like that. Very cool. Um, so now I understand a little bit better the evolution and how we, we go from from food on the restaurant side to food on the delivery side to, you know, delivering in general and the and the whole grocery store experience of, of late. I, I'm going to ask this question, but I feel like I already know because I feel like the food delivery space was one of the strongest uh, areas to work during the pandemic. Am I am I wrong about that, or is my my sense correct? It got busier. However, they needed more drivers out in the field because it took too long for the places to prepare the food because they were limited of how many hours they could be open. They were forced to stay, keep their doors closed all the new rules and regulations because of the pandemic, right. which slowed down. And so there was more, there's, is there more competition as far as new drivers on the market as well? Oh, there's a lot of, it, it definitely yeah. became more saturated because there's an opportunity to earn extra income in your spare time. Yeah. And even, especially before the pandemic, it was 24 seven. Uber Eats was booming in this market. I watched it. I was one of the first drivers of for Uber Eats to work in the Long Island area, Nassau County. Right. And I did incredible the first year, and then they slashed their prices. Oof. Big time. Yeah. Because they saturated it. People are desperate. They're doing deliveries for very little money. Okay. So even though many more people were ordering in and using these services, you have more people signing up to work for them. You have more demand being put on the restaurants. And since post-pandemic... The restaurants, the small town business owner, they find it very hard to find help. So that slows down the process too. Right. You know. Yeah, the physical manpower in the restaurants is it reduced, but they're still getting the orders. And so you have lots of people trying to deliver food, but the, the capacity to produce the food is, is reduced. Oh, yeah. Okay. Significantly. Yeah. And I'd imagine that the, you know, the higher quality, like local restaurants too, you know, are dealing with competition from you know, fast food and cheaper food mm-hmm. and, and things like that. Okay, that makes sense to me. What would you say currently is one of the biggest challenges for the shopping business specifically that you're focused on? Getting the word out that I'm up for hire. I'm very familiar with the industry. I'm good at the shopping. I'm good at customer service. I get the delivery done. But what my challenge was getting the word out that I'm up for hire in a targeted area Central Nassau County. Okay. That's why LongIsland.com, starting Monday, um, paying for one year of advertising to target a specific area in Nassau County. Gotcha. I have a list of 30 towns, villages, cities, whatever they're considered, and I want to get the word out that I'm up for hire. Yeah. Because if people don't know that I will provide the service of shopping and delivery, no one's ever going to go visit my URL. Of course. To hire me. And they're not going to learn about the dumpling app. Yeah. Getting the word out, you know, one of the biggest challenges. So mm-hmm. we're happy to help in whatever way we can with that. And shout out to longisland.com and and uh, and your dumpling uh, URL, which we mentioned and we'll mention again, forward slash Michelle 26. That's right. With uh, two L's. With two L's. <laughs> And so you you mentioned the specific area. So if we, if we go to central uh, Nassau and sort of draw a, a circle around it, those are the, the primary towns that you're focused on delivering for? Can I name off some yeah, towns? Yeah, please, like, name, name the towns, because if yeah. someone's listening to this and they live in one of these towns, I want them to know that they can hire you. Freeport, 
Baldwin, Merrick, Belmore, Seaford, Wantaw, Massapequa, um, up to East Meadow, Levittown, Bethpage, Plainview, Hicksville. Will you come to Union. Amityville? You know, uh, that would be my cutoff point. I okay. would come to Amityville. Okay. Yes, I would. I'm right on, because I'm currently living in Amityville, I'm right on the edge, because I get deliveries <laughs> from Massapequa. I order restaurants that are in uh -huh. Massapequa. So I was just trying to figure out maybe if I'm if I'm in your extended zone. So. Sure, I would okay. do that. <laughs> okay. Good Absolutely. Oceanside, Rockville Center, South Hempstead, Mineola, Carl Place, and I would even drive to Long Beach, Lido Beach, and Point Lookout mm -hmm. because I'm very familiar with that area. I live in Freeport. Yep. So that's not that. It's out of the way for some people, but it's not really out of the way for me yep. because I jump right on the Meadowbrook. takes me on the loop. I'm right there. Gotcha. And I, I know the stores that are there. Yes. I'm familiar with that area as well. I had some family that used to live in that area. It's very beautiful. Yes, it, it can, is. It can seem out of the way, especially if you're coming from Suffolk County out here. It seems like it's out of the way. Yep. But it's worth going and visiting. What is your favorite part of doing what you're doing with the delivery service? Shopping to earn income. Yeah. Because I do enjoy it. I, I like the atmosphere of walking into a big store if I'm going to supply a service. Right. For myself, I'm really quick. However, to shop to earn income... And get exercise at the same time. Yeah. That's something that I took into consideration sitting down as a delivery driver. You're in the car. You sit down a lot. Yeah. So, so you get less less manual labor, right, because you, you, you have the time in the car. It's not like like being in a restaurant walking back and forth between tables all the time. You have your nice walking time in the store. And then it's over, and then you can relax for a little while. And at your own pace. And at your own pace. Yeah, there's no one yelling at you to do it faster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's appealing. And I see what you mean. When you said the phrase shopping to earn income, there's something inherently, like normally when you shop, you are spending money, and the money is going bye-bye. And now I am shopping, I am looking around and choosing items and saying I'm going to buy this, yet... I'm being paid for this. That's right. It is. There's something attractive <laughs> about that. I never quite thought about it that deeply, but it must feel fun, right? Yeah, if you enjoy it like anything else. If you yeah. enjoy what you do. And then you must learn inevitably about like odd grocery items that you didn't know about that maybe you end up trying. Do you, oh, absolutely. Does that happen? You see somebody buy something. I didn't know this was a thing. Let me try this next time I'm shopping for myself. Yeah. Well, when I deliver food, I've become... A customer to at least half the places. Yeah, well, and they know great. me by name, and they know that I'm a customer, and they also know that I'm their food delivery driver. Right, and that, and you know what, that bed brings up a thought about just general networking, right? So, like, mm -hmm. as you're out there and you're finding that all these different people like these different restaurants and these different places to get their groceries, you can meet the managers and the owners and and just get to know everyone that, that's out there doing business locally. And yep. so, there's sort of an inherent networking thing there. That's really cool. Cross promotion, yeah. word of mouth. Hey, we know all about it. Yeah, that's very cool. Okay, I understand. I'm understanding more and more about how appealing this is. We asked you what your favorite part was, and this is a similar question: Is there a thing that you love most about about the job? I could start my own small business and work for myself, create my own hours to support myself. I, it's like, it's like a business owner creating jobs for people who need jobs. I'm going to start my own business, my own hours, build relationships with repeat customers, clients, yeah, to give quality service. No, I like that because it's this, you know, you have your favorite thing about the actual activity of the job and then you have what you love about what the job kind of represents and does for you as an individual and what it what it can offer people. That's yeah. awesome. I really like the independent aspect of this uh, dumpling site. So I'm glad that I learned about that. And I'm glad that you're on it. If we could uh, have access to a time machine, this is the sci-fi question. I'm a sci-fi fan. So let's, <laughs> let's step into a sci-fi episode and let's put you in the time machine where you can go back and talk to a younger version of yourself. You can pick any time, any critical moment in your life to give future self wisdom and advice what would that advice be that you would give to uh younger michelle find out what you love to do first of all just because you're raised in a certain industry mm -hmm. i mean i'm happy it led me here but if you asked me years ago the tail end of my waitressing serving career i wasn't happy right but i kept it out of fear then i took another job which led me to the demos i didn't hate that but it was also out of Necessity, it's it's an industry that I knew. Mm -hmm. Many times, a handful of times, took a job for security. 
to, you know, earn money. That's what you got to do. And then unless you make the time and give up a lot, you don't have time to figure out what would you rather be doing later on Yeah. to earn income and what are you going to do to get there. And then the whole process of trial and error, giving things a try, led me to here. And I said, you know, I applied to this job seven years ago, the food stores offering people shopping for you in store and you come and pick up your goods. Yes. I said, that's the future. That was, that's how it began in the food store. And they just kept saying no to me. And they wanted me to continue to do something I had a lot of skill in, which, you know, helped their bottom line because I was very good at it. Right. I didn't hate it. But I was bored. It's difficult when you're very good at something that you're bored with or that you're unhappy with because obviously you you have a value there and you're providing value and it's reliable. But ultimately, if you've lost some passion or, or if you'd never had that passion to begin with, if you're just tired of it, eventually that will, I think, show up in your work. Mm-hmm. I was teaching for a lot of years, five days a week with no vacations. I loved it, but I got to a point where I was so tired of it and yeah. that, that didn't make me feel good. Like, okay, I'm I'm a little bored of this or I'm a lot bored of this. Mm-hmm. And I feel as though uh, what I needed at that time as a teacher was was patience for, for people who were just learning. And I found myself so sick of doing the introductory lessons that I was losing that patience that you need to to have with someone who's brand new at something. Of course. And so I felt that at that time that was a sign that I should maybe phase out the teaching and focus more on the other things that I do, obviously the freelance and this facility and, and all that stuff. You're an audio engineer. Yeah. And, and you I, love it. I love it. And I love teaching people, but my... Um, my percentage of time that I was spending explaining things to others as opposed to being able to just engage with the thing that I enjoy mm-hmm. was just a little bit too much on the explaining side. And I do enjoy explaining, but I, I guess I prefer like a 60-40 of doing to explaining as opposed to like a 50-50 or a yeah. 60-40 the other way. And so I needed to just shift that balance to where I can now I can still teach private lessons and I I have more fun if somebody just casually asks me a question about something now as opposed to like, oh, did you want to come to my lecture, you know, instead. So I, I, I appreciate that. Sometimes you have to put the thing that you're very good at but losing passion for or bored with. Uh, in the past, and sometimes if you're if you're feeling that, anyone who's listening who happens to be feeling like they're at that point with their job, you know, it's good just to be aware and just carve out some time every day, like Michelle is suggesting, to think about what you'd rather be doing or what you want to do next. You don't have to stop immediately and, and sacrifice your security, but take 10, 15 minutes a day to do a little plotting and planning, and eventually I think those 10, 15 minutes a day will add up into something that you can actually take action on and feel comfortable. So, Yes, and when, when I knew about that job opening, and it was very new, the shopping and people coming yeah. to pick up the deliveries, in-store shoppers. I didn't know anything about the third-party apps, and I knew nothing about Dumpling. I don't even think it was around yet. Right. And look at me now. Like, I knew this seven years ago. You know, I probably would be running a department because that's what it came down to when I left my last job. I saw the department, how the people, they had the people in the room, you know, a team shopping in the store, yeah. cars pulling up, picking up their orders. You have to learn a computer system. You have to learn how to communicate with your customers. Well, that's what I'm doing with the app. I'm just doing it through the palm of my hand, through an app. That's so cool. I feel like you know, tons of bad things uh, as a result of the pandemic, obviously. There some small silver linings. Sometimes mm-hmm. I think that it took some technology that we had already in society that we were just sort of hesitant to learn how to use as, yeah. as a whole. For instance, I had a Zoom meeting with with a company just before the pandemic. And I was like, what's this? This is interesting. Yeah. And and uh, I had, I was like, oh, that worked pretty well. That was that was an interesting online meeting experience. And then a few months later, everybody was on Zoom doing everything. And it was like, okay, well, this technology was here, just like the technology to, to order groceries and have somebody shop at the store. All that stuff was existing, but we weren't sort of forced to utilize it. And so, and then we were sort of forced to utilize it. 
And now mm-hmm. I think we are hopefully emerging into a space where now you have the option of, okay, I can do things the more old school, traditional way. I can, I can walk everywhere, do everything myself. Or I have this option of this convenience factor of if I am tired and I don't want to do my grocery shopping, I can just do stuff on the phone. And that whole, you know, that thing that Amazon nails where you're lazy and you don't want to go out and get a thing and then it shows up at your door in a few days, bringing that to the level of smaller businesses to like be able to harness that the instant gratification factor that something like the you know the phone app can provide yes. with what you're doing and and having it be that you're connecting with an individual who's running their own business as opposed to a giant corporation who you that, don't feel any sympathy for <laughs> and i like that a lot i've witnessed a lot of um third party gig workers even with just the prepared food delivery they're just in it. They get angry at the restaurants. They're yeah. very inappropriate. It's like, well, there's a help wanted sign up. You could go behind the line and do it yourself. Yeah. You don't want to. Yes. The attitude, they just want to see how many they can turn over because it's all about, you know, the right. bottom line. Forgetting about the networking and the people you meet along the that, way. That's right. Yeah. You got to keep in mind that any person that you're rude to in a, in a casual uh, day-to-day or business interaction is, is someone that you, you could be maybe networking with and, and, and having a positive sort of local outreach moment with. And, uh, you know, so... I, and I, you don't know who's delivering your food, like what kind of car they're driving. Yeah. Just because you drive an older model, you should keep it clean. Yes. And you'd be amazed how... I'd say at least 40% of them, you go, if I pulled up... If I saw somebody pull up and deliver my food. In that car, I, I wouldn't be, want to eat it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. It's not even using a bag. You don't care if you keep the food hot. You don't care if you keep it cold right. in the summer. Or stealing a fry. Don't steal a fry. Oh, and that's that has, because <laughs> I follow the industry uh-huh. and I watch many YouTube channels. They have uh-huh. a lot of stories to share and they have it on video. Wow. And it's amazing how many people think that that's acceptable. Yes, and and um, an inappropriate amount of vanilla air freshener is not a replacement for a clean car. I'm yeah. just saying, one time me and JJ were in an Uber going to the airport on our way to Nashville, and the amount of fake vanilla in the air was nauseating to me because I have sensitive stomach, but it just made me think of that. It just it? wasn't just clean. <laughs> they were overpowering. Yeah, the scent. I felt like I was inhaling artificial vanilla mm-hmm. as opposed to air, you know, and that was a problem for me. But I got over it. We got to Nashville anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't remember the Uber driver's name, so I won't call him out for his extra vanilla. But (laughs) I like the idea of keeping a clean car, especially when you're delivering food, especially. Of course. So, Michelle, thank you so much for letting me uh, pick your brain about all the specifics of your business. I may avail myself of your services personally if you can get to that outer edge of your ring in Amityville because I am a lazy shopper. And like I said, I do go over budget a lot. I'd like to stay on task more often. If anyone would like to access Michelle Shop's services, please visit the website. It's going to be shop.dumpling.us forward slash Michelle 26. And that's Michelle with two L's. Michelle, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to the Long Island Local Podcast. If you're interested in studio membership programs for music production or content creation, please visit audioworkstationsinc.com. And please check out our guest of today's podcast. We enjoy having on all local entrepreneurs. If you'd like to be considered for a featured interview on our podcast, please contact Long Island Local Podcast at gmail.com.